Not should not be respected when it comes to the bans, but should be respected when it comes to the answer to the late game, for example. Bruno, surely, a great hero in the late game, but maybe they should match that. Uh, th they should have a hero that can uh, destroy the uh, CW in the late game. With that being said, we're jumping into the drafting phase for game number three, where both teams, they can take a punch, but more importantly, they can dish out the punch. We're looking at here, looking like both teams have already banned quite a few heroes here. And we're just waiting on the first pick. Looks like AP Brand will be the first pick, we and Onyx will be second pick. Manning out the Kaja, the Joy, and 1-1 one, one for Onyx. Manning out the Matilda, Nolan, as well as Guinevere. First pick, Frederick for AP Brand. Mm -hmm. Onyx follows up Your with the Faramis, <laughs> as well as the Bruno. Okay. Ooh, great choices here, but these two we've seen from the two games right now, yep. loose side, 100% win rate, right? Yep. And I think uh, Valen and Claude could be good for, for AP Brand. Claude, obviously great against the Faramis, great against the Bruno. Valentina can be able to copy that Faramis. The only next option might be Lilia. So I'm thinking Lilia or Valen with the Claude here for AP Brand. Yeah, because I kind of feel like if you don't take those options, it is going to be bad now for you. That's Let's right. go seven games. Oh, uh, okay. Yes, we do want seven games. Let's go. Let's go seven games. You also have a picture of Alien there mm -hmm. from Fireflux. Shout out to Alien if he's watching this. That's right. And again, looking at this, I agree. 100% with you, Wolf. Yeah, but it looks like they're, they're going for a different angle oh, here. They're picking totally up the Brody different. as well as the Arlip, but we can see when it comes to the fights, yep. they can fight a lot of CC here. Yep. And that, that's a combo, that Frederick and Arlet, that's a combo because you have uh, supplementary sup, uh, stuns that can allow the, the, the Arlet to have so much dashes, unlimited dashes, unlimited uh, ways to sustain himself. <laughs> Mercury is real. It. Yep. I mean, you said a 4-0, and it's not 4-0, so right. that part of the curse is real already. Okay, okay. All right. So again, going back into the draft here, mm -hmm. I like what you said, Wolf, yep. the, a lot of vengeance coming in from yep. this Arlet because of all the CCs coming in from AP Brand. Most wanted, Nolan is the most contested what? hero. Banner oh pick 143 it's times it's in 145 it's games, 99%. Ban and pick rate, and now the on it, stars, they're going with the guy batting out the Novaria as well. Now, my question is Is this the most uh, like contested pick of all time, or was the Fredrin even Ooh. more contested at M4? I don't know, but either way, for M5, it's not a Nolan, it's a Yeslin. Yeslin. Well, technically, mm. Nolan, because we don't get to see him a lot. Okay, you know what? Never mind. Yeah, yeah. Neverlin. Ne well, we do get to see him, so it's not never. Never say never, man. All right, Wolf, take over. Your team yep. is bad. Nolan, uh, obviously, Nolan is one of the strongest heroes, but so is the, the Novario in the hands of AP Brand. I think the few is very comfortable with this hero, despite, you know, ha having to face the Faramis. The thing with Novaria is it's a threat when you don't have that dive. So Onik banning out this Novaria kind of tells me they will not go for any kind of dive kind of composition, maybe on the XP lane. But overall, they will close this out with a with a front-to-back composition, maybe secure the Minotaur, maybe secure the, the, the Tigreal as their front layers, or me, maybe even a Ruby, again, for Keyboy. Yeah, honestly, having that Novaria with the Fredrin as well is going to be very difficult for you to fight around the turtle here. Yeah. With Onik, it looks like having the Akai is going to protect the back lines here, so yep. perhaps they're fleeing again for CW, so yep. Onik going into this match, going up against AB Brand, they're really putting a lot of pressure on CW yep. shoulders, uh, well, shoulders. What's interesting is the fact that they are ignoring the Valentina completely. It yes, feels sir. like yeah. they want the Valentina. We yep. will overload you with more ultimates already at Akai yep. and Faramis. Which is crazy because you have, uh, you have so many good ultimates to copy and they're just yeah. forcing the Valentina out. Meaning to say that they uh, they they, I mean, they know that, a that the AP brand will not have a good time with that Valentina. We gotta have this conversation as well. Yeah. Going up against the Bruno, I kind of feel like the distance Valentina goes in is gonna be a little bit easier right. for Bruno to deal out the damage yes. compared yeah. to the Novaria as well as the Lilia. So I think this is solidifying yeah. uh, Wolf's uh, theory about how mm -hmm. the draft they're not gonna go for dive. Yeah, we're not they're gonna go for dive. So Minotaur should be the band here for AP Brand. I wanna give that. Even when um, you have access to Valentina, that's a zero that will make Onik Whoa. really comfortable. Whoa, what? what was that? Wait, let me just see here. I'm not seeing a ban. So Seems like there's no ban. No ban for AP Brand? Is that a mistake? It has to be, right? It has to be. We're talking about Nolan and not no ban. Whoa. I mean, I don't know how we're. Okay, they're uh, solving it. They're solving it for sure. Yeah, for now, again, we're just uh, looking into the situation. And when I say looking into the situation, we're turning around and we're looking at the players. No. I don't know. I don't see a lot of reaction coming in. No. 
right? No. Okay, but, but okay, we can we can see here that they are discussing. So, yeah, I feel like on it they're just waiting to see what is going to be the result. If not, we're just going to continue the, the advance like, like like normal. Okay. It's not getting picked up. There is a bit of dive if this draft goes through. Yeah. How do you recover now if you're AP player? I mean, obviously the. the we were mind talking games. about Minotaur, but could be mind games. Could be, right? AP, AP Prince still has the Valentina, but uh, maybe they consider Angela now, with their he heroes that they have. And then, how about Diggy, actually, for AP Prince? Diggy and Lapula, or oh. Diggy and uh, perhaps Valen. You know? That's a good choice. Mm -hmm. Diggy, Valentina, you steal one of the ultimates, and then the other one is used to just yep. force the team. Spicy. Yep. Okay. Very spicy. I'm not against it. I'm really not against it, especially yeah. going up against uh, Onik here, where you want to contest the neutral yeah. objectives. Having a lot of damage before the fight starts is going to help out, especially because yeah. they ban out the Novaria, probably There's because of no that reason. Gord. Gord. This land is oh. And the Lapu. And it will soon hey, be a the panelists talked about it. Hey, oh. listen, 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 right? Okay. So we got word that, okay, we're going through with this, but we got to talk about the score because even the panelists have talked about this is the new age of an Eve, new yeah. age of a Farsa. So it's all about zone control. Gord is great for his Faramis overall. But against Yu Zhong. But now. against Yu Zhong, no, against Akai. Oh. Yu Zhong round. Oh man, that's a. Uh, that's a yeah, that's a weird pick, but of course, AP Brand, they might be able to make it work. Which means on, it can just go for something like Ruby to defend themselves, right? Someone who can tank the damage of the Gord, the Front Knights. They still have the Minotaur as well. Uh, they have so many heroes for Kiba. Even a choke could work in this particular scenario. Definitely, against a Brody, right? Yeah. I mean, that's usually the green light to go for a big pick. Yeah. And hey, you there called you it, Mr. Yeah. Wolf. The choke comes in. But yeah, to confirm to everybody who's still wondering, no ban, that is indeed what you see. No ban coming in from AP Bren. Mind games. Mind games. AP mm. Bren wants to give a statement. Yep. Against Ani, we just need four. And here's the thing. Is but if it they not, lose, is right? It not, but is it not impressive if they win, though? It would if be. If they win, be. though. If they win, it if would be impressive. Win. Amazing. But yeah. then I got to ask, if they lose with four bands, that mistake could be like a oh, man. bit costly. Oh, obviously. I mean, you're going to be uh, scratching your head so much. And you're going to be filled with regret afterwards. Well, with this just tells us that uh, AP Brent just needs to win. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're jumping into this game. Head scratcher or not, we got to see. With AP Brent coming in with the mind games, is it enough to shake the Sky King Sonic? Five or will they the continue to show the that they are Smash untouchable? Them. We're going into game number three. All troops deployed. Be scary. I'm actually scared for the Gord in the early stages, just mainly because of the Yuzhong, the Akai, and then you have the supplement of this show. And even then, we were talking about no dive from the side of uh, Onik, but then if you realize after the Yuzhong as well as the Joe pick, with the Faramis intact, that means that they have the green light, they have the license to get into the back lines now. The first three picks coming out from uh, Onik might not be dive heroes, but with the Faramis in combination with the Cho as well as the Yu Zhang, that's gonna be scary. I'm legit scared for this horde. Oh. Well, flicker very aggressively in the start of the game. Super Marco taken low, but look at the decision to not flicker back. He decides to walk away, but he will pay with us a lot of HP. Mm -hmm. Now we gotta see how CW manages the lane because it looks like Super Marco, even though he was chunked up quite a bit, he is gonna give, be able to last hit that gold minion there. So good effort coming in from Onik, but Super Marco. Sticks to his guns, yeah. staying in the lane. We're going at the other lanes. It's Lapu Lapu versus the Yuzhong. I believe that Flap Easy will have a great time this game. I think that overall, this was uh, probably the best pick here for AP Brand. Great versus the Faramis. Obviously great against CW. And CW did not go for the Purify, went for the Flicker. So that's uh, going to be a target for sure for Flap Easy. And right now looking at the battle here, Sans. Started the battle off being very proactive around the map, trying to target Super Marco here. So the question is for Onik, as well as AB Brand, which is the lane that's going to be targeted? Are they actually going to put a lot of pressure on the gold lane, or they're going to put a lot of pressure, as we see right now, perhaps in the EXP lane? Yeah, the EXP lane for sure, because they need to make, um, they need to team fight around the turtle. Right. Very important for AB Brand as well as Onik to get this first turtle. All right, the turtle is going to be the name of the game, and we got to look at the the, the the boots coming in. If he gets level four, as well as Flap Tizzy, both can dive, and both can dive very, very hard, but Kyle Tizzy goes in on his hand. No flicker on Sans, you got to remember it. He go all in for AP Bren. They find first blood. 
by catching Sans off guard. Meanwhile, Kyrie holding onto the turtle. Kaltizi still has that red tree. Keyboard's looking for the flag. Few gonna be spotted out. Heavy spin still ready for Kyrie. Dumps in. Oh, what? It's Flap Teasy who gets the steal on the turtle. Now, furious dive defensively by Boots. Ogwen following through. Kaltizi doing the same thing. Keyboy. Jikundo to the front. Boots gonna be chunked down by Ogwen. Boots running away still. Ogwen still chasing. Ooh. A big vengeance. Ooh, the reset. final slash resetting. Raven Spider by Flap. No flicker committed. No flicker to be used. Onyx still hovering over the orange buff right now. Stop teasing. Looks for the steal. Jumps in. Sans. Doing some damage back. Raven Spider. The third spot gonna be used up right now. Missed the gush. No flicker used. Flap. He didn't just steal the turtle. He stole the orange buff too. Allow me to say. Awning is to breathe because I don't think oh. I would ever see this, but... Oh. 1v1 and outplay from Sans pops the Nether Realm clutch. Massive play coming out from Sans, but my oh my AP paired with Ogwen as well as Flap Teasy. Early game aggression coming out from them, and Kari was holding onto the retribution because it was cooling down. It was he was two seconds away from the retribution to be off cooldown. But then, Flap TZ steals that orange. Dual hero here, statistic, statistic as well. 70% win rate for Bruno and Fermis whenever they're paired up together. I was about to say, I kind of feel like Boots made a mistake because he was going down and he was going to... Oh, but before that, CW gets engaged on. Good stun over, Flicker. Backwards from CW. Keyboy with a way to drag it defensively now. As that's the missing projectile, not connecting. Keyboy has got some stacks on to him, but Super Mario won't decide to pop that torn apart memory. Cal TZ will decide to invade the enemy jungle. Two levels ahead. Who gets it? Was that Kyle? Dude, at this that point, at this point, oh. even though Kyrie was able to scare but again, the difference there, two levels, that's that. a big impact, Wolf. Wow. Absolutely. And this is going to be a big problem for Arnik, especially because they're facing up against Brody Lapu Lapu. We're talking about the problems for few, but now you can disregard that totally because AP Red, they've created four problems for Arnik to solve. And few is not a priority at all for Arnik. At this point, AP Brand, they can pick up the tempo because for a Lapu Lapu, level 4 is all you need. And now with all the advantages coming in from Super Marco, I feel like he's just moments away from his second item. And then once he gets the second item, he's moving with the team. Okay, but Flap Teasy on the other side gets picked off. Super Marco tried to go for boots there. But Kyle will be able to trade it back for a neutral objective. He knows the info. Kyrie has used his red tree. And he goes straight for the purple buff. Keyboy. Jeet Kune Do not connecting. Ogwen. Connecting on his first skill. Now Onyx will lose out on the purple buff. Kyle Teasy steals it away. Invades Onyx jungle. Yeah. Right now I think it's a little bit rough for Kyrie, but I think it's fine for him, especially as an Akai. But right now the space given to CW having one kill. But I kinda feel I kinda feel like they're still targeting him here. The turret eater, Super Marco Keyboy finds the Jikundo way the dragon, but it's only on to the offside. Super Marco flickers back to safety. And now Kyle's locking Keyboy down. Another Realm HP dealt with by the appraisers. Round the top connects and Keyboy will lose his life. But whoa, Ogwen takes it away. Vengeance. At this point again, if he ready can speed up. Flav was caught. He still wants to fight. And he does fight. Getting onto the back. CW forced a slight tackle defensively. AP Brand a bottom of time for the rest of the members to come through in the mid lane. And even with that play, that's uh, going to be net positive for AP Brand. Forcing out the heavy spin. And Sans cannot do anything at this point but to wait for their moments. Cal TC with the blade armor pickup. This is going to be massive. 3.4k compared to Kyrie. It's only secured 2.5 thousand gold. And even the XP is going to be bad. This is going to be a snowball at AP Brand. Especially their jungle. This is what they need and this Ooh. is what they get. Oh man. Flanking maneuver on the oh. CW. A brave spider. The flap teasy. No, it's on it. Oh, going to be kicked back to the turret range right now with the helm of the Shadow Stampede. Bring them back all the way through. I missed the gush from Phil. Melts them down. Keyboy falls, but Boots gets a double onto Flap Teasy now. Sans looking for another opening in the skirmish. Super Marco with an aggressive dash forward. Kyrie looking to go for this orange buff right now. And Appraiser's Wrath secures the orange buff away from Kyrie. Two levels ahead, and they're looking to go for the purple buff next. Dude, right now I'm worried Super Marco just got that malefic roar. 
This is what all he wants. This is what all he needs. At this point, AP Brand can say, you know what? I'm not looking at minions, man. I'm looking at heroes. Use the red tree, though. Kyle TZ. Because he knows there's no he way Onik can contest. He knows. It because, that's because carries half HP. No matter what happens, they will be able to win the turtle fight. And even in Onik wins the retreat battle afterwards, it's not going to matter. They're going to be taken out. AP Brent Snowball is just online. Dude, look at that cheer, man. Kyle Jesus secures the turtle. At this point, AP Brand, huge power spike. Absolutely huge. Because not just Super Marco securing that Malefic Roar, but Few as well getting that Ice Queen 1. And now Keyboy has to get away. For Onik, what are they waiting for? Well, what is going to be the power spike for Onik that gives them the green light to fight back? Maybe when they have level 50 on carry, maybe if they have level 50 on CW, that should be the only option. And when will that happen ever? 16 minutes, 18 minutes. They have to buy the time. They have nine minutes to Ooh. buy everyone. Now, Onik definitely not in good shape to fight now. Yeah, no. Looking at the items as well, a one item lead for the mid laner for AB Brent. Yeah, it's a 1,000 gold lead between the mid laners. That's something we don't get to see a lot from, but few on the score so far, absolutely lethal. Ogwen trying to chunk Keyboy down. Meanwhile, the rest of the team trying to look for a dive. Yeah, right now. Onik, they're in turtle position. This is Onik being defensive. This is Onik understanding the game. They can't take unnecessary damage. They can't take unnecessary risk. So try to beat as much gold as you can. But looking at how AP Brand is playing, Kyrie is going to be a little bit starved. So he's going to get that level 15 much, much later. Three levels down. Keyboy now going to be engaged on on his signature show. Final slash canceled away as Shun Fu. Getting out, but not from the taunt and the Mystic Gush. Even the Netherrealm comes in late. Super Marco torn up by memory. Boots gets out in time. Ogwen diving in. Petrify locking him down. Sons pulls Kyle. Ogwen flickers out of the stampede. Up top, a turret traded in. CW finds it, but Flap Teasy might be looking. No. He falls back. The good thing about that is AP Brain were able to force out some of the battle spells, the Petrify coming up from Boots as well as Sans's Flicker. They did have to spend some of their Flickers, but the fact that they have forced Onik to remove all of their resources means that they can take the Lord fight so easily. 12 to 9. That's the difference between Kalteezy and Kyrie. All right now, looking at the formation here, Lord Dance initiated by AP Brand. Doing quite a lot of damage to Lord. Onik, they're spread out. AP Brand, they're clumped up together. Ogwen sees Boots. Conceal. Conceal coming down. The Rectory will be won by Kyle. TZ. And now they're looking to collapse. They're looking to punish any maneuver. Kyle TZ locking Keyboy down. Kyrie walking on the other side of the map. And Onik will be able to disengage. The Lord giving over to AP Brett. Sans now having the Lightning Truncheon is going to help him out when he wants to defend the base. But is it enough? Yeah. It's not going to be enough for now. For sure. I think that the best scenario you know, for Onik is if they don't lose any of their inhibitors. It's oh. going to be a total order. One Kyle. stab. Kyle takes it. Dude, damage dealt. Is oh. this for real? It is Ogwen for real. doing the most. Ogwen doing the most. Few second place. Yep. But the damage from Sans looks like it is going to be enough. Yep. So I kind of feel like I agree with Wolf. Just Lightning Truncheon. Can't do it just yet, yep. but Keyboy goes in. That's a lockdown, but a Mystic Gush connects to the back line. Flap's easy will fall before Onyx front line does. Now it's a lockdown. Oh, Sans gets wiped. AP Brand blitzed him down, bursted him out. And now AP Brand, 7,000 gold lead. Moving forward, they're looking at the hitter. Holy defense use. Oh, so again back to back. A quick stab from Pal Teasy. And Onik has lost again on one member. The laser not quite in range. Onik still able to defend from the first lord of the game. Missed the projectile, side stun. tackle for CW, but it's not going to be enough to get him out of range. Even with the splash from the turret, Onik lose a base turret with the first lord of AP Bread. And now, Black Dragon form used by Boo. Oh, that damage, though! Oh. Memory, oh my goodness gracious. Boots was almost melted down. Whew. Two base turrets. Let me just say, AP Bread, their mind games is working. Yep. It's working. It's working. And the thing is, losing Sans twice in a row. I mean, losing him once, that's a fight because they were able to get the kill out of Flap TZ, but losing him the second time meant that they will not be able to defend two of their turrets. 
Uh-oh. That's a oh, poke no. down off the Kyrie right now. Another round. Not oh, it's gonna be in time. Keyboy finds a good one at the dragon, but it's not gonna be able to survive in this onslaught of damage boots. Finds a petrify with a nature. But still Sparkle falls. The ghost burster is able to take him down. CW dealing some damage, but AP Brendan side to disengage. Two for one in favor still of AP Brent. Look at the items, Wolf. What else does Onik need? Oof. Another defense item for Kyrie for sure because you see that when he turns up into the fight, even when he's not dying, he's put so low that the heavy spin is not going to be utilized properly. So he needs a second item for sure. We have Sky Garden Helmet eventually for him to be able to tank up. And then eventually a Radiant Armor. They definitely need Radiant Armor here for Monik. Somebody has to take it. Otherwise, few will just destroy them. SCW looking like he wants a Demon Hunter Sword as well to be able to deal enough damage because Kyle Teasy has been soaking up so much damage coming in from CW. Right now, Onik, they're at the back foot. But again, they've been in this situation time and time again. So I kind of feel like every brand, they can't... They can't fall asleep here. They gotta make sure tighten the gameplay and make sure they don't make a mistake coming in. Stampede from Sons. A resource used up. Kyrie poked down by Ogwen. And also by Theo. Kyle holding the Lord. Pinned down. Final slash used up already. Sons. Shadow Stampede once again. Mystic Projectile connecting. Chunking Sons for a bit. Onyx are still hovering over. Watch out to Marco. Yep, right now. Keyboy used the conceal, but immediately found out. I don't know how Keyboy can go in, man. He has to make some kind of miracle play. Sans, even he can't find any angles. He has a flicker. On it looks like they have to disengage. They have to. There's no way they can contest an AP Brent. Capitalize a free lord in the 13th minute. Right now, Onik, they have to defend. At this point, too much damage, man, being dealt out by this Gord. They got the Yuzong, but the Yuzong can't even go in. He flies, and immediately AP Bread strikes and force him down to the ground. Radiant. Boots can't do much here. Radiant Armor picked up by Kairi Kiboy. He has his flicker back. Sans is the most important hero for now, for Onik. And he might be final slash. That's going to be a problem for Conceal of Onik. Oh, we're looking for an angle right now. Mystic Gush! On the Kyrie. Heavy spin with another realm right now. The Lord's going to be dealt with right now. Skiboy jumps into the back. Not able to find an angle. Stunned up. Tain CC. Keyboy taking out. Sans with a flicker. Shadow Stampede. A Brazer Splash connecting LCW. But it's still going to be able to dish out some damage. Flap TZ with a Brazer Spider. On the back with a flicker as well. Boots finds a better fire on the Cal TZ. Final slash. Bring it back. But he finds the kill. He dies instead. CW. Four minute waves right now. One more minute wave coming down. Sans taken out by Super Marco. It's CW for the world. A slight tackle back. But what is the member supposed to do? Will AP Bren just lock on to the turrets? AP Bren strikes back. Even though Arne won the previous game, but they're like, we're in this. The score now, ladies and gentlemen, 2-1 to one for AP Bren. And who needs the fifth band, right? Especially when you drafted this Lapu Lapu together with the Gord. And we kind of criticized at the first try with the Gord. But the Lapu Lapu made so much sense in combination with this art at the tempo that AP Brent played in. Onik just can't breathe. I gotta say, man, this mind games is crucial for this best of seven. The real question that I think everybody, it's on everybody's mind. Coach Ducky, Coach Ren, was that a mistake or was it all part of a big grand plan? Given how amazing AP Bren controlled the early, late to mid, I can't even say if the mid or the late happened where it did because of how well they forced the advantage. They bulldozed through Onik, choked out all of their resources, and made it seem like they got all the heroes they wanted anyways and put Onik where they needed to be to go 2-1 to one already oh. this deep into the series. Like truly, it's interesting to see. Did it come to a point where everything fell according to plan? So much so that they didn't even need that final ban at the end of the day? Or was it really just just nicely done. The team played perfectly well. Let's not forget the fact that they could stack their CC almost immaculately. But I think we have to talk about our MVP here, brought to you by the Republic of Gamers. Give it up for your boy, Few, leading the team, but playing hard to get.
the way few played this gourd one could not believe that he even went deathless all right there's a yuzhong on the other side there is an akai on the other side all heroes meant to find and displace few but still he went four zero and five hell homie's not even rocking wilderness blessing he's not he's not he's being greedy with it just the quick agility he even takes mystery shop on top of it all i don't know he gets away with too much and i think you know a lot of these older picks as we jump into the highlights is going to make a lot more sense here right early stages of the game you have to admit that Ogwin was doing a great job not only disrupting recalls but better yet slowing down Kyrie in his own jungle not just you also have Kyle Tz who's constantly pushing the advantage he knows that if I can take everything away from Kyrie his heavy spins are almost always constantly going to be defensive and if that's one out of the equation the Yu Zhong isn't even really a problem exactly now the best part about the composition is that you have a lot of these enablers with strong C see but you can't cash it out without the right damage and that's where few comes in right great communication between Ogwen and a few great communication between Kyle TZ and few and I would even make an argument that even flap was being part of that equation that's right constantly threatening with the bravest fighter and that just left Super Marco with what we would like to call in the business a gold lane experience what a performance by few what a performance by the MVP and Gideon, come here, let me uh, tell you a little something, all right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Few is yeah. a two-time, two-time SEA Games gold medalist. He's two-time SEA Games gold medalist, no way! I mean, that's not even all. He was part of the original roster when they crushed it at the World Championships at M2! With that said, let's go ahead and check out the emblem loadout here. So far, we pinpointed the fact that it was a little greedy. Check it out. Oh, yeah. Not even a single wilderness blessing from AP Brand. Save for Ogwen, right? Ogwen needs to be where he needs to be, mm -hmm. and he needs to save up his kit for when he's going to compromise on it with those final slashes, which he did, like, say, almost on the dot whenever it came off of cooldown. Yeah, no, I think what's really interesting overall, right, when we're looking at the emblems, even the item builds start to get just a little bit greedier. Let's hop onto it right now, because as we can see, clearly Kyrie is so under under farmed, right? Can't do much about it. But then we jump over to people like Owen, people like Super Marco, people like especially when it comes down to few. He needs to be greedy, right? He's looking for the Ice Queen's want to slow down his opponents, but more importantly, making sure that he quickly gets that Lightning Truncheon so that he can maintain his speed at all times. Looking at Onik in their early to mid transition, it was clear that Sans was still playing Gila. He was still trying to displace the cores of AP Bren, and the fact that he can only really find Super Marco made Fuse transition into an MVP core winning performance all the more easy. Because look, even the Purples got compromised. Even Few was taking a little bit away from Kyrie, and that's what allowed for them to barrel on forward. Because even if, if say, if Onik could find a solid heavy spin, mm -hmm. that could have been the saving grace. That could have allowed for the little bit of damage from Onik to come through and punish, but that never happened. But that was only one part of the equation, right? When you've neutered Kyrie, now. Then, all your focus is on our sandbag here, Mr. Keyboy. Every single time he tries to go in for that big dive on towards Fuse's side, he gets punished each and every time. There's just too many layers that he has to get through just to get on top of Few, whether it be the final slash, whether it be the energy eruption, or even the bravest fighter who's starting to give him issues. Yep, looking at the damage dealt again, Sans a hair ahead of CW, who had a decent amount of farm. Truth be told, a lot of the firepower from AP Bren was being laid on to Onyx Peel, onto Onyx front line. Mm -hmm. And that said, it's just the matter of what you got and how you use it. Onyx can't use it effectively. They have solid damage, they have solid output. It's just, it, could, it wasn't allowed to effectively excel. Mm -hmm. Unironically even. I feel like even when you're locked into farm, as you're trying to play a team fight composition designed around just finding the right team fight around neutral objectives specifically, that might have been the big punishing moment, right? Because you don't have those small skirmishes, you don't have those messy fights, you don't have those enablers anymore. You must move as five and you cannot divide and conquer. With that said, Onik now down to their, I'd say, Few left straws. Uh, there's a lot left in the tank for Coach Yeb and Coach Addy. So with that said, I hope they're ready to regroup and reset because there's a lot left in this series.